Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now the question before us today is this, would you rather have a processor with one core running at three gigahertz or a processor with two cores but only running at 1.5 gigahertz? Well, if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, before we dive into this subject, a bit of background information. I have a video on multitasking, multi-threading, and multi-processing, which really is key that you watch that to understand some of the things I'm going to mention in this video, and I'll link to it up here and in the description below. And I also have a video on instructions per clock, per clock cycle, which will is good background information for this whole subject. So again, link up here and in the description below. Okay, so let's get started by going back to the very beginning. Well, not the very beginning, but the beginning of the century. So at the turn of the century, I love saying that, turn of the century, 20 years ago, we had the race to the first one gigahertz PC. And I remember getting my one gigahertz AMD, and it was a single core processor running at one gigahertz. And this really was a great barrier, a real milestone that we were all so keen to reach. And it was, for the day, a very, very fast PC. Now we move forward a few years and then we start to get dual core processors. So we had kind of like the dual core AMDs, there was a dual core uh, Intel Pentium Ds, and they were now running, we've now got to about two, 2.4 gigahertz, that kind of thing was happening. So we see now this switch from single core to dual core. Even though we'd gone up from one gigahertz now to two, 2.4 gigahertz, we got this idea of dual core. And that's because there is a limit to how fast we can run processes in terms of frequency, mainly because of you know, all the electronic stuff and quantum tunneling and all this kind of stuff, and because of the power requirements. We'll talk about power requirements in a moment. And then you fast forward some more and you get to 2010, so 10 years ago, and we start to see the first dual core smartphones that have got dual cores, and there we're dealing around one gigahertz, 1.2 gigahertz, but in a dual core setup. And of course, if you forward to, you know, 2018, 19, 20, like that, we're now into octa-core processors, uh, and they are pretty much the norm on Android. Now, I said I would mention power. Now, power consumption is phenomenally important for mobile, but it is also important for desktops and for servers because it relates to also to the amount of heat produced and to the cooling required. Now, there is an equation, we won't go too much into it, but basically the power is relative to the capacitance, the voltage squared, and the frequency that you're running at. And when you do the maths, we don't need to go into it now, when you do the maths, it actually turns out that if you have uh, one core running at let's say three gigahertz, but then you have two cores running at 1.5 gigahertz, the two core variant, and this is the important thing, the two core variant uses much less power. In fact, it uses 60% less power. So going from one core to two cores and then lowering the frequency, not just halves the amount of power, actually drops it by 60%. So when we started to get to two gigahertz and you know we've touched three and four gigahertz, actually the power requirements for those starts to rocket up because it's voltage squared, that's an important part of it, multiplied by the frequency. But when you bring down the uh, frequency and you bring down the voltage, because you are using multiple cores, you actually get a lot lower power requirement. Now, one thing we have to understand is that each microprocessor has different performance characteristics, not because of the frequency, not because of the voltage, but because of its design. So if you take a Cortex, let's say A75, and you run it at a certain frequency with a certain voltage, and then you take, let's say, a Cortex A77, running at the same frequency, at the same voltage, the A77 will be faster. And that's because the internals of the chip is designed differently. And it's the same in the PC market. Each AMD generation that comes out, you know, the, the Ryzen and the, and the Zen architectures, all this goes, and Intel the same, the i5, the i7, the 10th generation, the 9th generation, the 8th, all these different generations, they're actually better because the internals, the designers, have found new ways of making a CPU work, all that fetching from memory, executing, and all that stuff that we've talked about in many other videos, they found ways of making that more performant. So my question, would you prefer a single core at three gigahertz versus a dual core at 1.5 gigahertz? I'm going to assume that you're talking about the same design of CPU. 
So when we're talking about the Apple A13 versus the Snapdragon 865, we've already got a problem here because they are very different core designs. Each core runs at a very different frequency and has different performance characteristics because of the microarchitecture, that means of the design on the inside. But if we're just talking now in general, we've already looked at that a processor, the same design of processor, the same microarchitecture running at three gigahertz uses more power than one running at 1.5 gigahertz. So you can see that when you use multiple cores, this is why we have eight core processors, it's actually a bit more complicated than that because we have big clusters and little clusters. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment. But when you have multiple cores, you actually need less power. And of course, on a smartphone, that's what you want, less power because you want the battery to last longer. So on the Apple A13, you've got two high performance cores and four energy efficient cores. So what do we mean by that? I mentioned it a moment ago. Basically, when there is lots of heavy work to be done, you're playing a game, for example, then those high performance cores will kick in. They use more battery power. They're more sophisticated. The microarchitecture is more complicated. It's able to offer more performance at a certain uh, megahertz, but actually it also uses more energy. But of course, you don't play games all the time. You might then switch the phone off, put it in your pocket. You might have just emails coming and looking at Twitter or, or whatever. And in those situations, the energy efficient cores kick in and they use much less power, but they don't offer the same performance. Now on the newest uh, iPhones, all six cores can run simultaneously. So if you have got something that needs a lot of work and it's multi-threaded work, then actually it can fire up all six cores. The two big cores will work the hardest they can and the four little cores will work as hard as they can. And when you get something like the uh, Snapdragon 865, the 855, the 845 and going back, it was all the same. You have eight cores, four power efficiency cores and four high performance cores. Exactly the same idea when you've got a lot of work to be done, the uh, big cores power up, they use more energy, but actually they get the work done faster, the littler cores, much more power efficient, uh, but they get things done slower. And again, on the Snapdragon, all eight cores can run simultaneously. So we've already seen that having eight cores versus six cores is actually better in terms of overall power efficiency. However, what about performance? Because of course it's this balance with smartphones all the time between performance and uh, power efficiency. Well, to look at the performance thing, what I've done is I took a Raspberry Pi and I've run a program of my own making, which is called the uh, Thread Test Tool. It's available on my GitHub repository. And basically it finds prime numbers in multiple threads. Now, the great thing about the Raspberry Pi is you can disable some of the cores. So what I've done is I ran the program normally with all the cores active. I then ran the program with some of the cores deactivated, but still the same clock frequency. And then I've tried it with some of the cores deactivated at a lower clock frequency. So we can see the kind of combinations uh, of results. Okay, so the test that I ran used two threads because I wanted to test the idea of two core versus one core. So it was running two threads. And when it's running with all cores enabled, 1.5 uh, gigahertz, that's the speed of the Raspberry Pi 4, the test completes in 12 seconds. So that's our benchmark number, 12 seconds. Now, when I then deactivate all the cores except for one and run the same test, remember it was a dual core test, so it was running two threads simultaneously, what happens? Well, actually, it's what we expect. It goes from 12 seconds to 24 seconds. So 24 seconds is the amount of time it takes to run that same test, but now on just one core. And that's because I've disabled the other cores, so I have to run it all on the same core, and it takes longer. And then what I did was I actually activated, uh, again, two cores, but I reduced the clock speed down to 750 megahertz, so half the speed. So now we've got uh, uh, two cores running, but at half the speed. I ran the test again, and what was the number? Well, it was 24 seconds. So this is the important thing that we can uh, understand here, that one core running at a high frequency achieves exactly the same thing as two cores running at half the frequency. And that's really important to understand. It isn't that one core is better or two cores is better. It's the fact that actually they offer the same overall system performance depending on the program that you're running. So uh, there is a little caveat to that, and that is that 
there was some slight difference. It was like 24.1 and 24.2 you know, seconds. So I did a much longer test that took three minutes to run. And over a three minute test run, you actually find that two cores is faster by 1.5 seconds. So three minutes, 1.5 seconds. So and a very small difference, very, very tiny, but there is a difference. Uh, so that actually multiple cores is better for a much longer, of course, when we're using our mobile phones, that's not gonna make zero difference to our actual real day expectations, but it is interesting to know that two cores is better than one core over a much longer test run. So what does that tell us? That tells us that if you've got six cores, like in the A13, but they are better at single threaded performance, that so each core is able to do more, and we've expressed this in, in this term of gigahertz, three gigahertz versus 1.5, or 1.5 versus 750 megahertz, as in Raspberry Pi, then you're actually gonna get the same throughput as you do on more cores at a lower frequency or a lower throughput per core. That's why when you're measuring the overall system performance of a smartphone, it's not ideal to just look at the single core performance because single core performance tells you one part of the story, but how the other cores perform together tells you the other part of the story. Now, I can see some of you already screaming about multi-programming and multitasking. As I said, I've got a whole video about multitasking and multi-threading and multi-processing that you really should go and watch. But I will say one thing, Android in its very nature is multitasking and multi-threaded. And the biggest thing about that is there is a process called the surface flinger that actually runs as a separate process so that when your program, when your app wants to display something on the screen, it doesn't happen inside your app, it happens inside of a separate process. The information is shipped out and said, okay, go and put that on the screen. And then this thing called the surface flinger comes into life and it deals with it. So very much by nature, the fact that you're running uh, something that needs to update the display frequently means that you're already running on multiple cores and you didn't even do anything to, to achieve that. And of course, a good programmer, a good app writer will actually take into consideration there are multiple cores available and write some of their code in a way that things can happen in the background on other cores using multi-threaded and multitasking that I cover in that other video. So what have we learned in summary? Two cores at a lower frequency offers the same performance as one core at a higher frequency, but actually at half the power, in fact, 60% less power. So multiple cores is more power efficient. However, we've also learned that there are differences between the core designs. So you can't directly compare a two gigahertz Apple core with a two gigahertz Qualcomm core because they're gonna be different in terms of their performance per clock cycle. As I said, I've got another video about that. So when you combine it all together, the best way of testing a smartphone processor is in the context of the whole system. How do those cores perform when you're doing actual real workloads? And that's why I use Speedtest G, the test I wrote myself, because it tests the overall system performance. I've got a whole channel about Speedtest G and testing phones side by side running my test suite. It's not just enough to look at the uh, single core performance. And of course, we haven't even talked about GPU performance and the interface between the CPU and the GPU. That's even a whole nother subject and a whole nother video maybe. So what is the answer to our question? Would you like three gigahertz at uh, one core, single core, or 1.5 gigahertz at a multiple core? Well, I think for me, I would say I would like the multiple cores at 1.5 gigahertz. It's more power efficient, and if you program it right, and if you're using things like Android, which have already got things like the Surface Flinger in it, you can actually get the same or similar performance than you would out of the single core. Okay, maybe you disagree with me. I'm sure you will be very vocal in the comments below, but that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, then stick around, hit that subscribe button. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.